it focuses on growth stocks. Let's do like a stocks 101, right? What is a stock even? It is a share of the company. I like to liken it to a, a pie. The company's stocks are a pie. And however many shares of the stock they have is that many pieces that the pie is cut into. Uh, most companies have millions of shares of stock. So it's millions of tiny little slices in that pie. So for example, if Apple has a million shares out and you own one share, then you own one out of one million of Apple. Simple enough, right? You own one one millionth of Apple. How does a stock actually make you money? Well, there's multiple ways. The easiest one to understand is that the more the company grows and the more cash the company is bringing in, the higher price that people are willing to pay for that share of the stock over the long period of time. So you buy it at a lower price now, the company continues to do well and profit well for several years, and then you sell that share of stock at retirement time for a lot more money than what you paid for it. That's kind of the basic way, but there are other ways as well. This is an example of what we were just talking about. If 10 years ago I bought 10 grand in Apple stock, that would have been 800 and a little short of 850 shares at $12.21. And then I sold it, the uh, same number of shares at $132. It made me $107,000 profit. Easy enough to understand, right? Well, another way that stocks can make you money is by paying a dividend. And that's basically a share of the cash that they're bringing in from doing whatever it is that they do, selling products. So for Apple, be selling phones, laptops, uh, people who are paying monthly for Apple TV, that kind of stuff. So they're giving you a little cut of the profits for you owning the stock, holding the stock. You can take that dividend that they pay you and spend it on whatever you want. This is not inside a retirement account. This is like if you had it inside a brokerage account. Or you can have your account set up to where it automatically reinvests that dividend into itself right so it buys you more shares and what that does is creates a snowball effect so i'm try trying to show that with a little chart here so if you put two grand in and you made forty dollars worth of dividends you have two thousand forty dollars right well if you took that forty dollars and bought more stock with it then you're gonna start snowballing and you're gonna start getting more dividends because you own more shares than you did before even though you're not continuing to buy it you're just letting the dividends buy more shares and therefore you get more dividends because you now have more shares and it snowballs and starts building and building same example but if apple paid a dividend that entire 10 years and you automatically reinvested it your 849 shares would have actually turned into 985 shares just through you taking that dividend and buying more shares. So it actually nets you a lot more profit, about 15 grand more profit. Now I wanna note before we move on, inside of your work retirement account, inside of mutual funds, you won't be getting dividends like that, um, like you would in a brokerage or a, an IRA. Basically, the fund is taking those dividends and those dividends add to their ability to buy more shares of stocks and therefore the price of the fund can keep going up. So this isn't exactly how it's gonna work inside a mutual fund. Uh, the third way that a stock can make you money is that the company can use some of the cash flow to buy back shares of their own stock. So what does that do? Well, it basically makes your slice of the pie bigger because what they do is they take cash, they buy back shares off of the stock market and then they cancel them out. And so you used to own one out of 1 million shares, which if you look here was 0 .0, 0.50s and then a one of Apple, right? Well, if over the next 20 years of you holding them, they go crazy and they buy 900,000 of those 1 million shares back. Well, you did nothing. You just held your one share of Apple and yet you now own one out of 100,000 shares instead of one out of a million. So the value of your one share, your slice is now 10 times bigger than it was when you first started, right? And you did nothing. They were buying back shares, making less shares, and therefore making the size of each slice bigger. 
And this is just an example of what we were just talking about. If you own one out of 100, you own 1%, 10, 10 million worth of their 1 billion market cap. If they bought back half of those shares, you now own one out of 50, which is 2% of the company. If they start, stay exactly the same, they never even appreciated over, you still would have made double your money just off of them buying back shares. Even if they didn't go up in value as a company, just from them buying back shares, you would have doubled your money in 20 years just because of them buying it back.